Ralphie and Glee live stream. Hopefully, we don't say. F okay. It is we. Hola. I think we're early. <laughs> we might be early. Whoa. By, yeah, by a couple minutes. Hi. Hi, Robert. Hi, Hi Robert. Abby and Sarah and Zara and Samantha. Hello, guys. Thank you for joining us on our uh, alternate evening live stream. Yes, the alternate Since... evening. Thank you, Robert, for suggesting to smash that like button. Smash that like button. Please. <laughs> Hello, Claudine and Sarah. Hey, you guys. So uh, we uh, have a interesting topic that we want to start it off with. Hi, Dana. Hi, Dana. Multimedia Susan. Hi. Yeah, and it's um, uh, serendipitous. Is that the word I'm looking for? Serendipitous. Uh, hi, Tara uh, and Carl and Rebecca and Valorf and Ruby. Hi, you <laughs> guys. It's serendipitous. And Susan, Pauline. <laughs> <laughs> Cannot listen because I am out right now, but wanted to say I love you guys. Aww, oh, thank you. Thank you. You are so awesome. Um, Love your comments. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoy them, too. And the Shelly official. Hi, Hello. Shelly. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Artisan Binks, Amanda. Awesome, you guys. Thank, thank you, you all so for being much here. for being here. So uh, we got a question on our Discord from Mysteria. Uh, oh, no, no. Uh, from Arts and Dragons. Arts and Dragons. Yeah. Arts and Dragons uh, asked about uh, juggling more than one thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I thought about that question because a lot of the videos that we have online have to do a lot with the fact that, like, I was juggling an art career and personal stuff and things like that. And uh, we realized that recently within this last year that at this point I'm juggling a book, juggling art, juggling, uh, really taking, you know, doing more media. videos, more media stuff, yeah. doing podcasts. As well as music and admin stuff and website stuff and house stuff. <laughs> so we are doing the first time ever. Hi, Joe. Hi. hi, Joe. And hi, Jason. So we're doing for the first time ever. We actually are implementing some kind of really uh, flexible schedule thing. And we are for the first time taking the entire month to record our progress through it. And then at the end of the month, we're going to share the results with you and share what, what we're doing, what it is that yeah. we came up with. I'm going to show you guys a preview of what it looks like, but it's. It looks like this, kind of. I don't know if I you can see I don't think you can that. see all the Hold crazy on. lines that are, like, connecting all the it's, things. It's not crazy. It makes sense. See, like... Rafi's is much more, like... Um, there we go. Epic looking. There you, go. you could probably screenshot that and take a look at what, what I'm talking about. Ooh, I went too bright. Mine looks more <laughs> like chicken scratch and blue pen that says, like, here's what I intend to do. You know, Daily. Th that's not as bad as I used to be when I was when I was in corporate. It was like spreadsheets. There'd be like pages upon pages. It would take me a month to just figure out what I was going to do. This was way quicker. It was just trying to break it down, break down the hours. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that basically is like um, blocks, blocks of the day and exactly how how would I spend my perfect day? And you guys will see more in the video and you'll get to see us. Yeah. Uh, trying to implement it and struggle and trying to figure things out as we do this thing. So Indeed. Uh, so as far as answering your question, <laughs> you got to set some time apart and have a space apart for each project because if you are working on one thing and working on the other, it is easier to switch gears in your head if you are giving yourself a time and a space to be able to work on it. That's that's my advice. Yeah, and if you have a schedule in place, it's also easier to deviate from said schedule without going into the thing where you just don't know what to do. Yeah. Um. So it's we're we're putting it to the test. We're gonna see if it's effective for us. We're gonna see, and then we'll share our wins and our fails with you guys. Tara said, "I go the chicken." 
and the chicken scratch route. Yeah. So am I now technically late? No. No. You are right on time. You are on time. Clee, you're having a great hair day. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Myster- you so much. Abby said, Mysteria on the brain. <laughs> <laughs> always. 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 Um, I go the chicken scratch route too. <laughs> yeah. Sarah said, hi guys. Hi, Zara. Hi. All right. So love. Oh, love the hair. Clean, very stylish. Thank you, Pauline. What about my hair? It looks beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Is your bandana um, slightly I feel like, askew? I feel like my bandana, you guys know what it means when my bandana is crooked. Oh, there. That's better. Yes. Yeah. It's been one of those yeah. days by you guys, by the way you, you guys. Got to check your bandana. Got to check my bandana. Do you get tired of each other working so close all the time? Do you take time apart? That is it's awesome that you asked that question. We've been asked that question a lot yeah. over the years, especially when we were living in the back of a Ford Explorer. Right. Cuz <laughs> cuz our our home was literally like 6 foot by 3 and a half foot. And yeah. um the answer is no. We don't ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's really friggin' special, and I feel really amazingly, like, dumbfounded by it. Um, I only ever really enjoy his company more and love him more yeah, and want to be around him more. It's quite weird, you guys. It's like I've never – I've actually never experienced that where – uh, we've spent, we've spent every day together for almost 11 years, for almost 11 years. <laughs> you could probably count, uh, on less than two hands, less than two hands. That's one hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's not necessarily one hand. It could be like one and a half hands. Yeah. One and a half. You could count how many times we've actually like spent a significant time apart and it's, it's not much. And when we do, we're like, we miss each other. what are you doing? Yeah. What's going on? Now we have days in the studio where we're like really focused on what we're doing and we might not have too much dialogue, but um, also we're actually taking measures to reduce that from happening as well. Cause we really like talking to each other and yeah. we never run out of stuff to talk about. Um, and it's really wonderful. That's, that's part of, that's part of the schedule was adding in, like I was saying, the schedule is all about what would my perfect day look like? And it's not just productivity, productivity. It's like actually time for hanging out, time for hanging out, enjoying your life, that kind of thing, because creativity comes from that, that place where you feel alive. And if you are just a a robot working through things, uh, it's, it's harder to, to feel inspired. Yeah, you can't put off your life till tomorrow just for a hamburger today. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Abby said, I still haven't figured out how to schedule anything. Well, schedule is turning into a bad word for me because I usually don't want to stop what I'm doing to do something else. Yes, and Abby, that's why this is, that's what we're working on is something that is flexible and it's not so much a schedule, it's more of a routine, like a routine forming habit that, where you can deviate where you could deviate because I don't like, I don't like rigid inflexible, inflexible schedule. Yeah. I, yeah. Then you just feel kind of trapped, but it just kind of gives you a framework. So there's no like guessing or analysis paralysis per se. Yep. Yeah. Diane says, hi. hi. Hi Diane. I'm still tweaking my schedule said Val Orb. I think schedules are probably I, always going I think, like, yeah, I think it just kind of changes and evolves as you change and your priorities kind of change. Like, I think honestly, it's, it's kind of like pricing. Like you have to be willing to look at things and change things, whether it's your scheduling, your routine or the price that yeah. you saw your art. Cause at. you evolve. And so things naturally evolve with you. And so I joke that we're on mock like 4,336 yeah, of the media schedule, but that's how it needs to be as we evolve over time. Yeah. Because the last thing I want to do, the last thing either one of us wants to do is get uh, burnt out by doing videos because like we really, we started this cause we enjoyed it. So yeah. like uh, trying to juggle that stuff and figuring out how can I do this? Because I got to remember, why did I start this? Because I enjoy this. I enjoy this connection and being able to talk to you guys. This is freaking awesome. Yes. So like it's remembering why it is that you got started doing something and then making your schedule, your routine, something that will constantly remind yeah, you of Yeah, you that. don't have to call it a schedule. A schedule. Hi to, uh, oh, oh no, I lost my place. Where? Terry Barton, this is Terry for a first stream with us. Hi from Southeast Missouri. Hi, Terry. Hi, Terry. Um, Forever Free said, that's awesome. Susan said, oh my God, that is so beautiful. (laughs) 
<laughs> Thank you guys. Yeah, we do. Wait. We do like each other quite a bit. Yeah. Um, artisan... people people are usually like, really, <laughs> like we're like yeah 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 it's true, <laughs> and I never want to take that for granted. I just don't want to take that for granted. Artisan Binks. Oh, okay, guys, I'm going to say the go, thing. Did it go, Pat? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Um, planning is key. I work full time. I'm studying a second degree and make art and online content and run a household. It's busy. Yes. Yeah, but yes. planning is the only way I can function. Yeah, you know, it just helps and, so you know, so you don't have to keep it all up here. And right now we're listening to an audio book that is called The Daily, oh, what is it called? Daily Routines of Artists. We're going to be sharing that with yes. you guys We're gonna share in, the video. in the video because it's actually what inspired it. And not only uh, that, but uh, looking at like Ben Franklin, Ben Franklin in his book, he's got his schedule, the way that he would lay out yeah. his days. So it's interesting because a lot of artists as creatives or just creatives uh, like inventors and stuff like that, we do have this wild mind that wants to be able to go and do something that is not rigid. We're, we're out of the box thinkers. So what we're trying to do is take something and make it so flexible that you could be out of the box, but at least you're giving yourself some kind of schedule where you don't have to think about what am I going to do now? You don't get stuck in that, yeah. that rut. And also so that you actually schedule yourself downtime so that you give yourself that opportunity as well. Yeah, so you remember to take that time off. Mario's here. I think Mario said that Cassie is at work. Oh, hi Mario. Hi Mario. And hello to Cass. Um, Forever free. You are awesomely fortunate. Yes, we are. Yep, yeah, finally. It took 40 years to find this one. <laughs> but you found me. Yeah. I was very unfortunate before then. Hopefully none of... <clears throat> it's what no led offense you... to anybody in the past. It's, it's what led you to where you are. <laughs> yes. Um, Esther said, I do better setting routines. Then the schedule gets kind of structured as a result. Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing. Like, it's it's it's... There has to be, because we are divergent and because we think outside of the box, there has to be some kind of flexibility mm -hmm. within the routine. It can't be rigid. Some of these things that we're listening to in this audiobook, they're like, I wake up every morning at six, I have two eggs and a piece of toast and some coffee, and I have this thing and I have that thing, and I'm like, that's, I have a that's peanut butter and jelly sandwich at 4.15, and then I go for a walk for yeah. exactly 27 minutes. I am like, well, okay, that's not... <laughs> it's fascinating to see the differences between these artists throughout history. Yeah. Jessica said, do you put cushion in your schedule for other people's lack of planning? Well, for when plans get changed? Yes. So we're still kind of figuring out exactly how that's going to work, but yeah. that's sort of the beauty about how we've done this schedule is that it offers some structure but it really is flexible it's yeah and and the thing is like this is all this is all a big test and at the end of the month we're going to record our progress throughout the month so you can see end, exactly what it is yeah at the end of the month we'll give you like what what our thoughts are on it because it's like taking the ideas from a rigid schedule taking the ideas from no schedule taking the ideas from the experience that we've had and trying to create something that is enjoyable mm -hmm. instead of it becoming like this you know today uh one of the one of the first was one of the first days where we, we ran into an issue with it and you'll hear about that in the video yep uh because life happens in flight other people's agendas come in and yep. like it could it could really <laughs> really throw you off so well that it's i think it's gonna be fun i'm really excited to share this with you which is why i can't keep my mouth shut I should. I know. We're going to give all the secrets away. Um, luckily, it's only really uh, very shortly into it, so we yeah. actually can't give all of it away because yes. it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> but Joe says, smooch, smooch. You guys are adorable. Oh, we We love you, you. Joe. Hey, Joe also you. said, may we all find love like this. Yes, may yes. it be. Yes, yes. I wish that for everyone. For everyone. Um, hello, artist from Portland, Oregon here. Hi, hey. Rizzo. Um, Wireless from Ireland. Amazing Rafi and Klee. Hi. Hi. Diane said, I spend a lot of time with hubby too. I think it's a matter of allowing each other some space at times when needed. It becomes second nature. Yeah. The longer you spend together, like you kind of like you can read the signals and you can just kind of know where your person's at. Yeah. And we're <laughs> we're weird. I, I think because we do spend a lot of time together, but a lot of times I'm just in a painting 
And, uh, you know, but it's funny because I'll be in a painting and when I'm finished with something, uh, the first thing I do is look over and I'm like, so what do you think? You know, and when she's finished with something, so what do you think? And mm -hmm. then we'll sit down and brainstorm some creative ideas. So like, basically it's like two kids in a, in an art studio playing all day. The only time that it gets kind of whatever is when other people, when there's other, other agendas and stuff like that, that's where like we sit down and we might be struggling with something and being able to talk, but it's not like we're just sitting in the studio all day talking, although we've had days where we've just oh, totally. sat in the studio all day talking. Yeah, in fact, one of our blocks of time turned into a talking block. Yes, it today. did. Yes, it did. <laughs> Dana said, my intention is good for scheduling. It's hard for me to disconnect from house chores and my art business. Yeah, all of that is in this thing. That's All what of it is in this thing. I'm hoping that it helps me to really understand like, okay, now it's time for this and it's okay for me to focus on this instead of this. Cause yeah. also there's going to be time for that too. Yeah. It, it's it, the, the whole reason that it's happening is because listen, with the book, with really sitting down and writing the book, like I've been, I, I honestly have been feeling a little bit stressed because I'm not able to, uh, I'm having a hard time balancing my commitments between the art and stuff. And honestly, when I start focusing on just one creative medium, I, I feel stuck sometimes, but I want to get this book done. So like I, I had to come up with some kind of structure that gave me freedom to do the other things as well and yet accomplish more things. And it's, it's based on the idea that even if you spend two hours or three hours at the end of the week, if you do it daily, that's 10 to uh, 15 hours if you're just doing a five hour day on one specific task. So like yeah. it really, it's the idea is to break it down and make you feel like you have way more time than you do on a daily when you're trying to just look at a schedule just daily. And hopefully, hopefully, we don't know yet because we're on like day two. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully leave you uh, as you end a task, leave you wanting to, excited to go back. Yeah. Because you weren't just like plowing away at it. Hopefully not um, fostering a sense of excitement instead of burnout. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the thing, getting motivated because it's so easy to get burned out. Yeah. So easy to get burned out on something. Um, Terry said, I just found you guys about a month ago, been binging on your videos since, bought your book and I love it. That's Aww, awesome, Terry. Thank you, thank Terry. You. Carl asked, any wisdom to share about getting motivated to do pet portraits? I generally don't mind doing them, but it seems like that's all anyone wants lately. Carl, uh, okay, so if you don't mind doing them and it's the thing about it is that anything that you do that it is easy, especially if a lot of people are asking for it. And that's something that I constantly have to pay attention to. If a lot of people are asking for it and it becomes popular, it is easy for you to in somewhere, some way, shape or form, turn it into work, you know, because I've seen, I've had jobs in the past that I enjoyed, but anything could turn that into work. And I experienced that while starting my art career were things that became popular and then they'd order it, they'd order it. And instead of getting excited because somebody was interested in something that I was doing, uh, I would get stressed. I was like, Oh God, you know, like my phone would cha-ching and I was like, Oh man, now I got to make this thing, you know, like, so it's, it's easy to get into that mindset, but you got to remind yourself, what excites you? You know, what what possibly could excite you about this connection of somebody asking you to take their precious and essentially uh, create a memory of them that is not just snapping a picture, something that is handmade. That encompasses that personality yeah, that each animal friend has. It's almost like you are creating a uh, a shrine to this to this creature and the meaning that this creature has to that person. And that is so much more than just, uh, I got to create pet portraits because it's easy to minimize what it is that you're doing. Um, so like, it's important. If you enjoy doing it, then find that enjoyment there. If you absolutely hate doing it, then I would suggest maybe saying no. And that's hard because sometimes when, when that's the income that's coming in, you have to, you have to walk that tightrope a little bit. All of our thoughts can get a little whack on stuff like that. Sometimes yeah. I literally audibly shout, like, I'm so grateful. I'm so. And yeah. <laughs> it's just to remind myself not to be so whack about it. Like, oh, yes, I do appreciate 
that people want this thing. I'm kind of being like I mean that's that's part of that's part of the schedule because like I'm sitting there and I need to focus on this book. Like I'm having a difficulty with with certain chapters. Like I just to be able to communicate what I want to say and then I sold something on the website a, a piece of art that is made to order, a nice big a big sale. Something that in the old days I would be like Oh yes, we we got one like in Ghostbusters, you know. And <laughs> yeah. instead, I was sitting there just, and I was like, oh, like I've got to work on this book and blah blah blah, and realize like instead of being the happy-go-lucky artist that I am, excited about creating my art, all of a sudden I was like, oh well, this is too much, blah blah blah, and I don't like that. I don't want to be that person. The only reason that anything would be listed on my website is because it's something that I enjoy creating. So, like, that's where... Sometimes you just got to remind yourself that. That's where I got to remind myself, yeah. Yeah, and you guys, I still nightmare sometimes about the last, like, um, employee job that I had 12 years ago. Um, And so that's a helpful reminder to me also. I didn't want to be there, and so um, I don't mind doing stuff in my studio, even if I'm, like, at first... Pauline said, yes, life, been working on a routine to keep me on track in my art. That's awesome. I, I mean, the routines, I, I'm not a big fan of being having a rigid, rigid routine. This is what I do every day. But I think it is important to have something that keeps you from getting lost in here and having to come up with, well, what am I doing now? Especially when you have multiple projects, it is so easy for everything to just hit you at once. And when you get overwhelmed, you don't do anything. You just don't do it. You just sit back and you're like in this state of confusion for who knows how many hours. It's such a waste of time. Hi, Kelly. Hey, Kelly. Dana said, I always wonder if I didn't have it in my home, would I do better? Okay, so this is my personal opinion. Um, I think if I had to go somewhere in order to work in my studio, I think I would get a lot less done. I personally think so, because the home life can be distracting, but also it is right here. Yeah. So I can motivate myself to do all the things I need to do because they're they're here. And there are there are two sides to that, because like I could understand having but it's it's all about having a section that is this. Now, we've been doing this for so long that we've actually compartmentalized places in the studio. Mm -hmm. The couch is where I sit down to write. That's where I feel most comfortable. The easel is where I sit down to paint or the table over here. Uh, Right here, this is where I sit down to connect and communicate and stuff. So like clean, I could actually sit here and watch stuff on YouTube or have something running, nerdy things on YouTube or like talk to you guys and feel very comfortable. So it's all about separating those areas and understanding that like when I'm done working on art, I walk away from the easel and I'm able to zone it out. But it takes a while to get there when something is just staring you in the face all the time, especially if it's like dirty dishes and stuff. It does take time to find that balance. And that's why it's important to set yourself up in a way where you could take care of all of it. Um, Okay, guys, I'm going to say this because the ticker tape jumped in an epic fashion and it's fine. Uh, But if we miss your comment or your question, please feel free to retype it because the ticker tape behaves badly when we try to scroll back too far. It does. Kelly said, how do you balance the art life when life beep happens? (laughs) So aren't we all kind of figuring that out one day at a time? Because it depends on the caliber of the life beep. And while this schedule hopefully is going to bring some clarity to that process, Sometimes you just have to take that on a case-by-case I mean, case basis. And that's yeah. the thing. Like there are, uh, so it's broken down into blocks and basically you are taking it by a case-by-case basis. Mm-hmm. And there are days or even possibly weeks where maybe you could do one thing. Maybe you could t- take a sketchbook with you because there's some crap going on. Or for us, maybe take the laptop and a camera. But like there are certain things that you're going to have to put on hold. But as long as you know that you get to come back to this thing that I do right now, this is going on. And yes, I got to take care of this crap. Mm -hmm. Maybe today, maybe for the next three days. But as long as you know, when I get back, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm working. This is what's happening. That's that's what I'm hoping that this does for me, because with four kids, two old adults, 
brothers, moms, in laws, in laws, all that stuff. Like just crap happens it does all the time and you know sometimes sometimes you can shift things around sometimes you can shorten your creative blocks to fit in the life stuff yes and if it takes an emotional toll on you sometimes you gotta say okay well i'm stepping away from then, then you the increase creative stuff. Yeah. yeah then you increase that that relaxation you take yeah. that block and you say this is my relaxation time. I'm taking the day. Because sometimes, the day. sometimes things that have to be dealt with take an emotional toll. Yeah. And you shouldn't be beating yourself up for not going to town in the studio. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, exactly. Um, what do you do when the corporate nine to five burnout consumes your energy? Man, you know, it, I could tell you now that I wish I would have done this because I had a friend that had the same job in management that I did. And he was actually doing art on the side. And, and he astonished, he, he fascinated me because I was so scared to do my art. And I thought that I was like putting myself out there, but I really wasn't. And he was actually putting himself out there. He had the same job that I had. The difference was that the job, he saw the job as his secondary job. His, his art career, he saw as the first job. So basically anything emotional or anything that was going on, he just didn't worry about it when it came to the job because he thought to himself, you know what? I've got this job here. If they try to stress me out, then I'll find another corporate job that is way. So like his attitude, I think it has so much to do with just your perception, how invested you are into one thing versus the other. And how much you maybe believe in yourself that like, this is a temporary situation for me. I'm going to make this art thing happen. As one of you guys so eloquently put it recently, uh, my nine to five is just a fairly lucrative side hustle. Right. My job is my art. Is my art. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, and it's it's easy to just say that, but it's it's going to take practice to get to that place yeah. because we're so so indoctrinated into that idea that the job comes first and and you're constantly walking around like worried that if you do something wrong or don't don't really put your all into it that you're going to get fired or whatever, especially in corporate. It's it's just ridiculous. Yeah. But honestly, it is just going in there. Just do your job to do your job and look forward to the moment that you get to paint because that's that's what your real work yeah. is. And it depends on who you are. And so I'm not I'm, you're speaking more about this. Me, dudes, I just up and left. Yeah. Like if I was truly unhappy somewhere and I felt like it was soul sucking, I never could make myself stay in, right. at a place. I couldn't. Right. Um, I mean, and that's the situation. If it is a place that is just toxic, because there are plenty of places out there that are like that, find a better place to, to do your side hustle. Yeah. And your, I know that nine to five side hustle, find a better place than the one that you're at. That could be easier said than done. But think about how much is it worth it to you? Really? Lu Lucy Cannon said, woo, made it. Hi, Lucy. Uh, Sarah, working on building a homemade craft business, but all the vids I watch say to niche down hard. No. Ooh. We, uh, I don't want to that be typecast. so mad. I know. We get upset about this. I don't want to be typecast, as it were, to one item, not sure how to proceed or what items to make. Create to what you want to create. You want an example of a non-niche, uh, uh, artist? Go to our website and then get lost in our website because there is so much crap on there. And the fact of the matter is that we do very well because we have an audience that loves this. We have an audience that loves these pieces. I have people that collect this kind of thing. Uh, some people collect that. So like that whole niche, the, the, the reason that they do that in marketing when it comes to niche is because if you're buying ads, which is all that they try to get you to do, buy an ad, then you're able to do your demographic. Mm -hmm. What kind of people is it? What kind of likes and hobbies do they have? And that's great. We don't pay for ads. We just put our stuff out there and people that like something are not going to look at something that I like and then say, oh, well, you do landscapes too? Oh, well then I'm not gonna buy this oh, thing that I like. Sense. Like it just, people don't get confused that easily. That's the thing that drives me crazy. They're yeah, like, yeah. don't confuse your audience. Like. Like it's a bunch of dummies out there that are buying art. That's not the case. So yeah, it, it it makes me a little mad. That was a little bit of a rant. I do apologize about that. I will say this. Okay. If you want to scale up your business faster than you can say retirement plan, then niche marketing 
is the way that people try and do that. And then you get stuck in that and then that becomes your thing. And then you become a manager to your thing because you don't you feel, feel like doing it anymore. And depth. you get, yeah, it's just, it's so, it's if, so stupid. If you are comfortable growing your following organically and people knowing more about you and getting comfortable with who you are on the whole and everything you do, uh, then yeah, you don't have to niche yourself. I mean, that's definitely yeah. what we're about. Chris said, hey, almost missed it. Well, you're here. Thanks for being here. I totally, Hi, I totally, totally missed Chris's. If, you, if you guys ever I'm get sorry. the chance, Space Art by Christopher Dahl on Twitch, usually uh, at 8 p.m. Central. Uh, yeah. And here Blackbird on the YouTube. Blackbird CD. Yeah, Check he, him out because he's awesome. Yes. And um, on the YouTubes. Yes. Uh, weirdly untimely is here and said, "Oh, I it, it appears I am untimely." No, you, <laughs> you are not. You, you are perfectly you are, on time. You are weirdly untimely. <laughs> um, Sandy, I have my studio at home so I can jump out of bed and make something I just dreamed of. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I I think it's so hard because like balancing that the the what makes having the studio at home so tough is when you are having a hard time balancing the housework with it. And honestly, it's all about minimizing. And if you're taking care of stuff at least for half an hour to an hour a day, then you, you, you're you able to bounce back and forth. And it's just mm -hmm. being able to separate that time. And as one of you uh, said so well earlier in the ticker tape, to have your designated workspaces. Yep. And it really does matter because it does help you get in that frame of mind that you need to be in for said thing. Um, yep. Even if you're working in a small space, because we are, so we just kind of like section things off how we do. Um, let's see. Did I? Uh, we Samantha. Missed I know what you mean by having to take a break. My studio space right now is a corner in the living room, but my five-year-old being home uh, till possibly March has meant no painting. Yeah. These and are then, different times. These are these are and that kind of thing. Like a five-year-old. The the only time that I got to paint when I had the the kids the that were around was to get them involved in their own painting and basically sacrifice like you're paying for that time to paint because you are sacrificing painting materials. Uh, but it's not really a sacrifice because at the end of it, they create something that they're really proud of. So, I mean, if that it helps if there's an interest in art there. Kerr said, I find it helpful to give myself a to-do list menu. That is, I don't have to do them all and feel bad for not doing them all, but yeah. I can pick from the list. Yeah, and that's that's very that's a very good plan. And that's what I have in the and when I do the Fantastic Four list mm -hmm. in the book. Basically, it's like these these things that you want to get done, and you go down the line and you get them done. And if you don't, if you just get one done or you don't get any of them done, you just move them to the next day. And the whole idea behind that is. It's easy to forget what it is that we want to work on or what's important to us. So as long as there's this consistent this consistent reminder there, you are going to eventually get it done. Yeah, because about the fourth or fifth time it pops up on your list because it got moved down, you're either going to say, well, this is rubbish and it's going off yeah. the list permanently or... Let me just get this done. Let me just let me just get it done. Let me just chunk this thing. <laughs> Uh, oh, the ticker tape moved epically again. That's okay, guys. Like I said, if we missed your question, I know some of you guys are joining us for the first time. If we missed your question or your comment, please feel free to type it again. All right, so let's let's go through these real quick. Okay, Diane said, um, I was in a soul-sucking job for 17 years. The only thing that made it bad was a specific coworker. Very toxic. Yeah. Ugh, that can be rough, too. That, when it's, yeah. Yeah. And it, you know what? And the thing is that, like, when it comes to those toxic people, the only time that they're able to pull anything from you is when you allow them to pull it. It's really hard when you're in the workspace because they might be either a coworker that is close to you or somebody who's above you. When you go in there with a I don't give a beep attitude, it takes away that power and you know, unless you are doing something severely wrong, it is very difficult for them to fire you. Now, be warned, that's exactly what I got fired for because I did not take a the toxic, carp. The, I did not take the carp. And uh, eventually it took like six months and I already knew that I was getting, you know, fired because like to to them, I was like unbearable because I just didn't care. I was like, like office space. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> how, I almost got a promotion. Actually. How not giving a bird can I actually get away with mm-hmm. here? Um, Esther said, I stayed in the toxic thing because I thought I was the only one who thought it was toxic. Therefore, it was my problem. I kept trying to fix me. (laughs) Ha ha. Oh, Esther, Esther, me and you, me and you both suffer from all automatically assuming it's us and it's our fault straight away, I think. And I've actually been really working on that in recent times. Don't automatically assume that it's just me. Yeah, it's, it's not, it's not. If you know that you're a good person, listen, you might be wrong about something. You might have the wrong perspective or you might have whatever. But chances are, if it's toxic, it's not you. Yeah. It's not you. T-Dog said, love your website. Very diverse. Thank you. Thank you. We love our website, yes. too. We work hard on it. <laughs> Mario said, make your vocation your vacation. If it's not, you're doing the wrong thing. Keep searching. I love that, Mario. Exactly. Exactly. That is excellent. Someone said recently, and I forget who, um, that even if it's not your main vocation, just allow yourself time to have meaningful things in your life that make you feel alive and fulfilled. Yes. It's important. Yep. Kerr says, one can argue that niche is a case of putting all your eggs in, yes, one basket. Yes. That is exactly what it is. You're relying on one thing. And yet you are so diverse and you love creating this and you love creating that and you're interested in doing this. And yet you are just going to focus on one thing. What if that one thing dries up and all of a sudden this thing that you were so interested in is what picks up, but yet you put no time into that. And then you say, I wish I had started doing this five years ago. Now I do want to make one thing clear. I'm also not hating on niche. If someone really specifically just loves to do one thing and do it amazingly well, then that is awesome. But so far, I've never met anyone (laughs) that only likes to do one thing. I mean, even when you look at a lot of the the big time, really popular artists that are out there, uh, Gerard Richter and... um, Uh, Jeff Koons and like all these people that are making millions of dollars that all the other artists are like, I want to be like him. They do not do one thing. They just don't. And so for somebody to come in and say that as an artist, you should just have one thing, one niche. You should focus on one thing. That is product marketing. Product marketing. We don't sell product. We are artists. That's the reason that people want to buy stuff that they don't necessarily need to survive, although they do need it. They think they don't need it. They think that they're just buying it as a luxury. So like, it just doesn't make sense in that realm. They, 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 I'm I'm ranting again. Tell I'm them. ranting, I'm ranting. Um, they're just regurgitating a bunch of stuff. It's okay, true. I'm done. Seems familiar, says, your audience is not a singular entity. Yes. Exactly. So that's a good. very good way to put that. that too. So good. Abby said that's one of the reasons I'm going to rebrand. Even though Maualoa expressions meant something to me, it really didn't convey the message I wanted. And every, every, everyone thinks I only do Hawaiian items. Abby, when we do when we do our Zoom session, we'll brainstorm and we'll talk because I know that it means something to you. So I, in my mind, I've been thinking like, how could we? do something where it's in there where you know that that's the meaning whether it's the image or the logo or whatever but it and also gives you that freedom yeah to to be able to express yourself in whichever way you want to yeah and, I, and i'll figure i spent four hours trying to fix things so i'll be sending the link soon on patreon oh sure for the zoom yeah yeah Zara said, I have made that decision, transitioning my primary job as the art. Beautiful. Congratulations. I love that. That is awesome. Pauline said, thank you for the great advice. I'm in a toxic work environment that sucks my creative energy. Really needed that pep talk. Aw, Pauline. Yeah, don't, don't. Do not ever let anyone, don't allow them to be able to suck your energy because you got to think of it this way. Whenever you get into a conversation with somebody, you are either talking to somebody that is inspiring you and giving you energy, or you are talking to somebody that is so miserable. And I don't mean miserable as in sad. I mean, just, just cynical and doesn't, that doesn't have that light coming from them that they need. Someone that takes instead of gives. Yeah, exactly. Energetically. Yeah. (laughs) So like, don't give it to them. Don't give it to them. And the only way that you'll give it to them is if you feel bad 
about what they said or what they're what they think of you and a lot of that man it it takes time to chip away at those things but like don't don't let them take that Kerr said slow growth is actually more solid. I mean, I find it to be more sustainable and less stressful. Yes. Um, if things start to move quicker than I'm ready for, sometimes I end up self-sabotaging anyway. Yeah. So, like, I, I'm I'm good with slow and steady. Yeah, I you really gotta, am. Yeah, you got to realize, like, that's one of the things, like, a lot of people want to blow up. I want to have a billion subscribers. I want to have this. And honestly, it, unless you flow into it, you're not going to be ready when you get hit with it. And I've seen so many people on YouTube, so many artists that just, it became a job and they got burned out. Mm -hmm. And so, and not only that, but like, you don't get to develop those real relationships that really matter. Uh, you know, like looking at, looking at the majority of the names on the stream, we know who you guys are from your comments and we know yeah. who you guys are from being able to have, have met you. Or... And we get excited when one of you guys finds us and it's your first time here and we connect. And it's Yeah, and awesome. I'm like, oh, there's a new friend. We get to meet someone new. I um, love that. Abby said, oh, I wanted to say, pray for me, guys. Lol, starting Dave Ramsey financial journey. Goal is to be able to buy our own house and move away from toxic family, hopefully sooner rather than later. Abby, you got this. You do got this. You got I have this. complete faith in your abilities. I know you'll do what you need to do yeah. and want to do. Yeah, you guys, you guys will, you guys have this. Seems familiar <laughs> said, what I expected to sell on Etsy was not what sold. Well, right, so you might as well put all the things you like to make yep. out there and see what the people like. To, uh, to, to dog strong. I, I go, go from, from niche to niche. niche. Yeah, niche to niche. I mean, then that's basically what it is. It's a bunch of things. Mm -hmm. You do abstracts. There's people out there that love abstracts. You do pet portraits. If you do them all, there's a market out there for everything. And even if you don't do something where there's an existing market, a market will form for it. Because if you like it, someone else, a group of people out there will like it. Most definitely. And sometimes you try a thing and you're like, ooh, actually, I hate this. Yes, exactly. And then sometimes you try something and you're like, ooh, I'm going to do this forever. And sometimes you do things for a while and it's all good. Yep. Ooh, the ticker tape has moved epically again. I'm going to put it's it okay. right back. Abby. Did we miss something? I wanted to say pray for. Nope. There it is. Okay. Esther. Oh, Terry, yeah. Terry Barton. After a 20 year hiatus, after finding your videos, I have returned to my passion, art. Thank you both. Terry, you are awesome. That is awesome. I am so glad for that. That is wonderful. Esther uh, sent Abby some God bless for her efforts. Awesome, Esther. Yeah. Kerr said, in the last two weeks of my former job, it was totally freeing when I was trying to do handover of my work. If people didn't bother to learn the things they needed to learn, it was not my problem. Yes. <laughs> I mean, then that's the thing. Like, if you approach work as if, you know what, this is my last week. But if yeah. you did that every day, chances are you'd be fine. You'd just be less stressed out about work. I actually did that when I was getting really burned out pre-pandemic, okay, burned out on the market. Um, I would say to myself when I was there, any day could be my last day, any moment. Like, I could just decide I'm up out of here. Yeah. And that did give me a sense of freedom. Like, I don't have to be here. Yep. Any day, could, any weekend could be the last time I do this. Yeah, and, and it, it, what ends up happening is that when you do that, you tend to not take shit from people that are toxic. You just don't. It's true. I gave less boops and took less yep. boop <laughs> towards the end of that. I do feel your style can touch all your niche. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It can. I always say we always say there's a raffiness and a cleanness about um, everything that we do, whether it's music or media or writing or fiber arts or jewelry or paintings. And or somebody's going to like it. I mean, the thing is that like we have all these labels for these established markets of what's out there and where you find these people. And this is where you find these kind of collectors. And this is it's almost like we forget that we're talking about diverse human beings that mm -hmm. like different things. We really do. We, we like so many different things. Yeah. I love Kung Fu movies. Mm -hmm. I love Pokemon. I love uh, Lord of the Rings. 
I love uh, some country songs, like older country songs from like Johnny Cash. Mm -hmm. I love rap. I love hip hop. I love alternative. I love 80s rock. And quantum theory. And quantum theory. And cooking. There is so much more to human <laughs> beings than just what people want to niche them for. And we like different things. Yeah, it just... we totally do. It's wonderful. Kelly said, if I had to paint the same thing all the time, I would go bonkers. Right? Me too. That's one of the reasons that I needed this schedule for the book so I could do other things. I needed to paint and write. Which and brings me back to the Carl's question at the very beginning. That's actually a good tip too. Like if you find yourself doing lots of pet portraits, right? Make sure you break it up with other creative yes. work. Yes. That that re-energizes you, not just strictly that one thing. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. That's a great little tidbit there uh okay ticker tape okay, ticker tape moved i like trying new things said patrice yeah it's fun it's, it is it I, is it is it's it's you know anything that you try that's new that's pushing you out of your comfort zone freaking awesome my goal sell enough so i can get more paint <laughs> ain't that the truth <laughs> that was my goal in the beginning yeah Burnout was a real problem with me when I first started working from home because there was no separation between work and home. So I had to make a strict no work on weekends rule. Yeah. Yeah. You know yourself. So, you know, yeah. like, you know where your boundaries probably need to be for your. And I think it's a good question to ask yourself, which is what we based our new schedule on. If my day went beautifully and I felt not burned out, uh, but fulfilled and happy and accomplished at the end of the day, what day, what would that day look like ideally? It's, and then kind of aim for that. It is so important. It's so important to look at that. And yet when you're looking at a lot of like, this is how you get more productivity. And, and if you want to have a productive day, when you're like, anytime that you research any of that stuff, they're just talking about productivity and balance. But it's like, wait a second, I want to live the best life that I can today. So like, what is my perfect day look like? And then schedule that. That's that's what matters. But figure out a way to do it where you could consistently do it and that it's flexible. Yeah. So it works for whatever mood you're in. Tomas said, hey, guys, I listened to your book as I drove across Wyoming on a photography trip. You saved me. I appreciate your videos. The last one helped me lean into my current video project. That's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Heck Tomas. yeah. That everything is... nerd said Shawan, my type of people. Yes, everything nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Donna said, I'm so glad I was never brainwashed onto niche. It's so freeing. Yeah. Abby said, I can't <clears throat> stay on one thing. I love trying new things. Yep. And Dana said, we downsized our home four years ago so I could quit my full-time job to do art full-time because I have an awesome supportive hubby. Yeah, and I love that. And that is very awesome. I love that. That's one of the first things in the the money book that i go through is you're gonna have to downsize because like a lot of times there is stuff out there that, or stuff that you're holding on to and it has sentimental reasons to hold on to it and it's really really hard but like you've got so much life left and either you're gonna do the thing or you're gonna hold on to the past and like that's it's it's a really hard choice and really there's no right one or wrong one. It just all depends on which what do you want to do? With yeah. It? And it doesn't mean you need to chuck it all out the no. window. But if you have things that <clears throat> like are weighing you down financially or space wise or anything like that, just reassess all the time. Hi to Adventure Seeking Artist hey. who is here and has thawed out. That's good. Awesome. Oh, man. All of our peeps in Texas. Yeah, I hope y'all are guys. doing okay. We've been trying to keep tabs on a lot of you on the Discord and via other methods. I hope everyone did okay. That was cray cray. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're sending you our love and our heat. Yeah. That's I me currently sending, am, that, I'm that was me sending heat. Producing a lot of heat right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's unusual for me. Twisted art lady, I can't do the same thing all the time. Yeah. Esther says the best thing that helped me jump ship from my toxic situation Sitch. was Rafi and Clee telling me the money will work out. It's still working out, but I believe it will. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, we had to, we had to believe that it was going to work out as well because uh, in the beginning it felt like, and it works out more and more. And I realized something like 10 years ago or eight years ago, I was like, when's it going to get to the place where it just feels like it worked out forever? Yep. And money is kind of always in flux um, in way, you know, because 
the more resources you have, the more stuff you're doing, right? And oftentimes the more investments you make. So money's kind of always in flux. And I like to say, you kind of got to get comfortable with being uncomfortable also and sort of create buffers for yourself yep. and, and do what you need to do in order to not be stressed about it. But at the same time, uh, maybe don't don't wait to feel like, okay, I got this until this like amalgamous abstract idea of like complete financial security. Yeah. I mean, you got to remember any kind of security, whether it's financial security. And this is so airy fair, you guys. And I'm sorry, but it's it's just it's it's what's worked for me. Any kind of security, that feeling that you have does not come from outside of you. It has to come. Security comes from in here. You feel safe. You feel secure. It comes from in here. And that is such a hard concept to really grasp. It has taken years and I'm still not there completely. But my life, my, my stress levels go down and I make a lot much better choices when I'm in that place where I understand no matter what, I got this. Twisted Art Lady said, I did the same. I started art full time with my hubby support and now I'm at that profitable turning point and that feels good. Congratulations. Awesome. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, thawing out too in Dallas. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. It's crazy. T-Dog said, how do you deal with health insurance? Right. That's tricky for freelancers and self-employed. It's something that we're still looking at. So like one of the things that we've looked at is the freelancers union. Yeah. And to be honest with you, a lot of health Health insurance depends on what state you're living in. Yes, it does. It can... Right now we're in Florida and the health it's insurance system is just not, it's not good. So like, unfortunately, a lot of that stuff is run by the states. It's not a complete all over the country, one unified thing. So like, I would, I would recommend taking a look at Freelancers Union. They're yeah. doing a lot of really cool stuff. They've, they've been involved in Congress and have, and, and actually with the, the pandemic relief, they were one of the ones that suggested to make sure that, hey, let's not forget the self-employed, self that resources were available to the self-employed. So Freelancers Union does a lot of advocate work on behalf of artists, creatives, freelancers, and the way that they fund themselves is that they're partnered with insurance companies. Yeah. We haven't done it, we but haven't, they will be we the first people done it, but they'll be that the, I look at. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, <laughs> if you have questions about it, that's something to look at right now, being in Florida. Uh, we are just living by the seat of our pants. We're totally winging it. It yeah. may not be the best thing to do, no, really, but uh, <laughs> we're going to be looking further into that. Yes. <laughs> uh, Kyle. Hi, Kyle. Hey, Kyle. Doing good, but yes, some people not. Warms up tomorrow, though, so just uh, uh, just keep our Awesome, said. Kyle. Awesome. Um, hopefully, yeah, hopefully things normalize for you guys. Um, Samantha. Samantha. I have moments lately where I feel down as I can't always paint. I have had the odd day where I'll let Florence paint her stuff, but we have an art off. Wish I had energy in the evenings, but hey ho. Yeah. yeah. Samantha, I think you're doing a good job of balancing, trying to balance the stuff. Yeah. yeah. And um, also, I love to hear stories about Florence. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> <laughs> that makes my day. <laughs> Hi, DB. Just hey, found DB. you. Uh, Chrissy, I have been obsessed with drawing engines for the last five years. When I get tired of it, I'll do something else. Until then, I will indulge myself and have fun with it. Yeah, I love that. Exactly. I it's love awesome. that. I love that. Uh, Anna. Hi, Anna. Hi, I'm Anna. late, but I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> DB, wow. Love hearing from my people. My people. Oh, yeah. You guys are grout. You guys are awesome. Great. I, I got, Did you say grout? I said grout. <laughs> you guys are not grout. Unless you want to think of yourselves as the stuff that holds it all together. And oh, then I suppose that's we're not, all grout. That's not... What I was going to say is I wanted to say you guys are all so great. And then I got distracted by, oh, my gosh, it's almost time. And then I almost said, wow. So instead I said, growl. Yeah, that happens. That all the happens. time. Growl, if you go, growl if you, you guys. Go, if you go on the vlog channel, you'll hear her how story, which is the worst. pretty thing. much what happened. Just the worst thing ever. Yep. Um, the U.S. has the worst healthcare system in the first world, said Kerr. Oh, I'm not going to so disagree. Bad. I'm, I'm, okay, I don't, I don't want to get into that because every time, as a self-employed person, when I'm looking at this stuff, I'm like, are you kidding me? This is are not, you? this is not. So, I, yeah. but I'm not going to go there. I, I believe that things are shifting they, they'll in get a better, better They'll direction. get better. They'll get better. Yeah. And that's all we'll say about um, that. 
as I said, I went full time to doing my art Rafi and Klee. Congratulations! Congratulations! It wasn't all my choice, but I was the low, low man, man on the totem, totem pole pro. at the Home Depot warehouse, so I went pro. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a great way to look at that. That sometimes, is a great way to look. Sometimes at Sometimes you just gotta like if if you get shoved off the edge, you just gotta hit the ground running. That's and right. Like, all right. Well, what can I do with this? Uh, 54, and I've never felt more my artist self than ever. That's yet. awesome, DB. Fantastic. That is freaking awesome. Automator. Bro, the PS5 viewed from the front held vertical looks like an anatomical... Oh, boy. Okay. That's some... I think that's some random commentary. We'll just, um, move on. Youth is wasted on the young. <laughs> Indeed. Although... Some of these young folks are impressing me with their, um, I just said some of these young folks. Yeah. Are, are impressing me with their capacity for compassion and wisdom and forward thinking. Yeah. So generations never cease to impress, in my opinion. I will <laughs> say that. <laughs> and I'm not sure if I'm young or old at this point. So I'll just say I'm doing my thing. Um, What's up, Captain Flannel? Hi, Captain Flannel. What's up? Uh, hey, always cool to meet another Samantha. <laughs> Diane said, 57 here, and I agree, DB. Yeah. Uh, Dave, online or in-person sales, which works better for you? Well, when we were doing our thing originally, we did predominantly in-person sales. Yeah. We fo focused on local, like, so a lot. So one of the things is that word of mouth helps really well. And at the time, uh, doing the online sales helped us really build up our confidence and really get out there because the internet is the same thing. Like, don't let anybody tell you, well, the more rides you have or more whatever, like people, the more people are talking about you, the word of mouth that comes with that, whether it's on the internet or in person, uh, the more people get to know you and the more people start to trust you, the more people that you get to talk to and go back and forth. So I would reckon it's a little bit easier when you're doing in person, uh, unless you don't have the opportunity around you. But like, I would definitely focus on both, not just one. Mm -hmm. I would focus on both. Obviously with the pandemic, uh, we had to make the shift to exclusively online and we've done okay. Yep. Uh, and it, that continues to grow. And the, so. thing, the thing you got to remember about online is that local is your local area. Online is the world. Like we're talking yeah. to people that are across the, the ocean. I like mean, it's amazing to me. This is this is amazing. It doesn't happen overnight. We've been doing this for 10 years and we've gotten to connect with a lot of really awesome artists and, and humans out in the world. But it takes it takes time. But it's. It's just it is mind blowing. I remember when I was in my late teens um, thinking to myself, like, I really wish there was a way for creatives to, like, easily share their art with other people. Yep. <laughs> and then all the things on the Internet happen. Yeah, like Vivica just said, hi from Sweden. You rock. Right. <laughs> you rock, too. That's so awesome. You guys are totally grout. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um. Hi, everybody. Hey, we're about 75 likes short here. Everybody hit the thumbs up, please. Thank you, SS. Thank you, SS. That's awesome. <laughs> That's so sweet. Oh, yeah. The Thank you. Last time, I forget who it was, like, hit the thumbs up. And, like, I was like, oh, that's the most likes we've ever gotten. That's so nice. I know. That was a pretty good, yeah. pretty good run of likes. Terry said 57 and have never felt more tuned to my art. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's excellent. awesome. It's um, whatever time you, like, go into it and find your your thing that makes you feel fulfilled yep. is whatever age that is. Yep. It's awesome. Uh, Esther said, already did. Thank already you, Esther. Did. Uh, Hilda, just came across your channel. You both are a perfect definition of love and peace. Thanks, uh, Hilda. Thank you, Hilda. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so nice. <laughs> uh, I was born middle-aged, said Samantha. <laughs> <laughs> um, me too. Yeah. She was. She was. Yeah. That's why we get along. <laughs> <laughs> you guys yes. are the Groot of Groot. <laughs> I am Groot. I yep. am Groot. <laughs> I love that. Does that make us that follow the gritty Groot? <laughs> follow the gritty Groot. 
I can't sell any more art until my town swap meet opens back up. Yeah. yeah, our stuff all shut down. Everything shut down. Um, we were glad that we had built our website uh, after the great Etsy kerfuffle of 2019. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that we had built our e-commerce. And at least, website. at least started focusing on the site. And like, because before that, we were more focused on Etsy because we were reliant on Etsy. Yeah, for and income. I was like almost entirely focused on local markets and galleries and stuff. Yeah. I, it was a, it was a hard pivot. So it gave us, it was scary, but it gave us an opportunity to like focus on our presence online and what we do. Yeah. And it turns out we love that. Yeah, we do. (laughs) A whole lot. We love it. Uh, Let's see. Hi from UK. Hello, Helen. Total awesomeness. I said S. Blaylock. Uh, hello, Arts and Dragons. Hey, we were just talking about your we question just, yeah, earlier. Yeah, we did. It's so nice to see all of these great artists finding their stride and making their mark on the world. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And yeah, kudos you guys, to you for being brave and putting it out there in recent times. This, this, you guys, is what I wanted when I started the the YouTube channel was to be able to connect to creative humans around the world to be able to have a creative family because I didn't really have that while I was growing up. I had that with Klee and and I was lucky enough to meet some friends that were, that were inspiring, but like you guys seriously inspire me when you put yourself out there in a way that you're like, I don't know if this is going to work. And so like, I love that. I love that so much. Oh, Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. SS said, hit thumbs up, everyone. Support indie artists. Thank you so much. Thank you. You got a second bell ring. Thank you for that. Dragon said, Etsy kerfuffle, Etsy shipping scandal. More like, also congratulations for being able to spell kerfuffle, Dragon, because (laughs) honestly, I never knew how to spell that word. I could say it, (laughs) but. Uh, Kerr said, please rant about Etsy free shipping was how I found you guys. Oh, yeah. I I say, like, that's actually, like, the best thing to come out of that whole conundrum was that a lot of you guys found us and we were able to make connections with so many people that were also like, WTF! Yep. (laughs) It's because Etsy was a snollygotster. Oh, a snollygoster. Very they clever were. and unscrupulous. Clever and unscrupulous. Yep. Shawan. Oh, thank you, Shawan. Oh, thank you so much, Shawan. You get extra bell ring. Wait a second. I've got a thing. I always forget. You didn't uh, do the thing. How do you do that? Nope. We'll just wait. This. There we go. <laughs> I'm so bad Rafi, with the technology. With the virtual currency raining down upon us. Yep. Um, let's see. Hi from Canada. Hello. And I need to head out to get some work done, said Diane. Thank you for the live and have a great evening. Thank Thanks, you. Diane. Thank you, Diane. We're about to sign off. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, we're gonna sign off now. Indeed. We actually have some media stuff to do after this. Yes. Minor. Then we're yes. gonna chill. Actually gonna be posting a podcast tonight, I believe. But uh yeah. And filming a short smidgen of a video. What? A (laughs) A short smidgen. Didn't you know that smidge is actually short for smidgen? I might have just made that up, but I don't think I did. I think that's true. She made that up. Smidgen. No. no. I think so. It's not a thing. I'm pretty sure it's a thing. Google that shit. I think there is comfort in who you are as you get older. Kids are out of the house. I can relax and create. Yeah. I Naomi, think there is comfort. Naomi and Wendy said, oh, my God, I didn't know you were live. I'm sorry, Aww. you guys. We rescheduled from Wednesday yeah. and probably didn't do the greatest job of announcing it. It was, yeah. Not the greatest. Not the greatest. But also, YouTube doesn't do the greatest job of notifying the people. Not anymore, at all. So. YouTube does not. It's In kind fact, of a collaborative mess one, up. One of the things that I'm planning on doing is actually setting it up on the website uh, to the newsletter and that way I'm going to personally announce when we're releasing videos and doing the live stream and keeping you guys updated on podcasts and things like that whenever Indeed. they get released. Because YouTube is not doing a good job of any notifications, unfortunately. Abby said, I think a lot of us found Rafi and Klee because the Etsy ran down. I, and said, I also found you from the Etsy video. See how great that is. <laughs> um, you two have helped me so much, said Robert. You have no idea. I have so much confidence in my art right now. That is amazing. Robert, that's that's awesome. You are awesome. 
I, I love that. That went by fast. Yes. Yes. Yes, it, yes, did. it did. I'm, I'm looking down I'm like it's already 8.02. Yeah. yeah. Didn't get a notification from YouTube. Yes. Yeah, see, that's what I mean. That's why I think I'm going to just do just do the newsletter. I'm just yeah. going to send out and whether or not YouTube sends a notification or not. Um, so if you guys are interested, I don't I, I have a newsletter. You could sign up for it. And uh, I think that there's a section that says if you want to be notified uh, for the media, stuff. for the media stuff. The tube. You can do that. The, the tube. The tube. <laughs> Blame it on the tube. Blame so it on the one. tube. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that, that was good, not good? <laughs> that was not good. That was not good. Someone asked if there was going to get a song, so there you go. Zara said, <laughs> I think Fridays for Lives are really great. Okay. Maybe uh, maybe we could think about that. Yeah. We've been we've been thinking of looking at our schedule and stuff and thinking about change, switching things up a little bit. So you guys let us know what uh what would work mm -hmm. um yeah you could we might be able to do a mixture of things and have some fridays and some wednesdays not sure what she's doing there you guys <laughs> this is kung fu. when did this start this started at seven. seven seven yeah blame it on the tube the tube gave me no uh and then went down the raffing clee rabbit hole lol there's still videos that i haven't watched and i've watched tons of them <laughs> I know. Mostly it's just just us or me like bah, 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 bah. I think it's really cool that um you guys sometimes will binge watch us. Um and it's weird. It's like weird in a good way cuz you know, like sometimes we go down a channel rabbit hole and watch a lot of videos. Yeah. And um it's fun and it's neat that our videos are enjoyable in that way. Friday is better than Wednesday, said Carl. Yes, Friday. You should tour. We're we just may. In the future. In the after time. In the after time. Uh, I said live stream every day. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps Sorry. someday we'll get to that point. Yeah. Friday evening for you, Saturday lunchtime for me in Australia. Australia. Oh, sure. You're in the future. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. It's so weird. Hopefully tomorrow is treating you well. Yes. <laughs> Uh, eight start time here in Maine. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, we're central time. We're yep. almost always at 7 p.m. central, regardless of the day, yep. of course. But yeah, the newsletter would be a good idea. Newsletter. Yeah, that way that way you guys know ahead of time. Because I'll send it out the day before we release stuff, and that mm -hmm. way you know. Oh my God, I was doing that today, binge watching. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's let's say let's say good evening. Good evening. Because I could or honestly lunchtime. Good lunchtime. Good lunchtime. I could honestly stay here and hang out with you guys. It's true, but let's get that podcast edited and get that snippet of video film smidgen. If That's you... my milkshake. <laughs> I drink your milkshake. <laughs> oh, we're small now. Yeah, we're little. We're little. <laughs> All right, so uh, just. To let you guys know that this really made my day. This yeah. really made my. It was. It was a little bit of a. It was a little bit of a rough day today. There were some circumstances that uh, uh, kind of threw me out of the loop. But uh, we I was, handled them. We handled them, and I was so looking forward to to just chilling with chilling you guys. with you guys. And you guys totally made this so much fun. Thank yes. you. Thank you so much for hanging out with us, and uh, thank you for challenging us with questions and. Letting us know what you guys have been up to. It's yeah, amazing. Yeah, I always love the conversations that just develop out of these live streams. I do. I do, too. So much. All right. So that's it. You want to say goodbye, Clee? Sure. Mwah, 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 mwah. <laughs> I'm going to say the same goodbye. <laughs> that was good. It's like Predator. You were like. <laughs> that was grout, actually. Did you like my predator? Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay. <laughs> All right. I adore you guys. Bye-bye. All, right. All right. So here we go. Do you remember which button? I think it's this one. I thought you said it was the other one. Dude, don't confuse me. Why were you confusing me? Um, Shaku was like, no, I just got here. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Shaku. 